Hello everyone, this is Noah, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about pressure testing. Now, the most common method of pressure testing in martial arts is sparring, uh, or randori for more of a uh, grappling-centered art. And generally, when we're looking at sparring and randori, they're usually done with a sport context in mind. There are usually a set of rules in place that are based on competition in some fashion, uh, and that's what we tend to follow. And we're generally doing this in such a fashion that both participants are training the same way. And so what you end up with in sparring tends to be a karateka versus a karateka. In randori it might be a judoka versus a judoka. But if we're looking at martial arts in a self-defense context, this isn't necessarily the most ideal representation of what we're preparing for. It's a good thing to do, nonetheless, because it helps you develop skills against someone who knows what you're doing. But a lot of the things that we practice, especially in karate, uh, is meant to be done on someone who isn't trained and doesn't know what we're going to do but that doesn't necessarily make them any less dangerous. And in fact, it can actually make them more dangerous because untrained people can be a little more unpredictable. So something that I like to do and I like to advocate for this is training in such a way that you incorporate resistance into drills and you can use those drills to build up to pressure testing in ways that aren't exactly sparring from the uh, sort of sport side of things. What you can do is set up scenarios so that one person is the, the bad guy, the attacker, and the other person is the defender. With that scenario in mind, you have an attacker who's untrained. So that person is going to be given a goal. They need to maybe throw the person on the ground. They need to punch them as much as they can. They need to kick them. They need to headbutt them. They're given a goal, and they are allowed to do anything that they need to do to accomplish that goal, but generally try and do it in the most natural way possible. So we don't want them to break out into a stance and start sport fighting. We want them to approach the scenario from the perspective of an untrained attacker. With that side taken care of, now we can look at the defender's side and have them react the way that they've been trained to react to these types of attacks. And this automatically gives us something different from what we're used to in the sports barring uh, type of situations because now we don't have two people squaring off with a set of rules that they both understand and they both know the techniques that each other are going to use. Now we have someone who is acting as a trained person defending themselves against someone who is acting as an untrained person and the untrained person can be attacking them in any number of ways that we don't necessarily see in sport fighting and it's going to be sloppier, it's going to be messier, it's going to happen at closer range. And this type of thing can be a lot more beneficial for self-defense purposes than only doing sport fighting. It does lack a certain level of uh, skilled resistance that you can get from doing sparring and randori uh, from that more sport-oriented approach. But the context that you're doing it in helps you learn to react to unusual things and react to a sort of messy pressure that you may not get otherwise. And it also allows you to build in more of a social aspect to your sparring and your pressure testing because it's not going to necessarily be okay, attacker, defender, go attack him. You can set these types of drills up so that they are very specific to 
social situations. You have someone who thinks that you backed into his car, or someone who cuts you off in traffic and they brake check you and you end up having to pull off the road and they're mad at you. Uh, someone who thinks you bumped into them on the street and gets upset. Someone who doesn't like the way you look at them and they're going to come up and start getting into your face. These types of things can be incorporated into pressure testing that is based on scenarios, but it's harder to build them into sport fighting. Now, you can blend the two so that you get the skilled resistance and the unpredictability uh, aspects and the untrained aspects by simply incorporating triggers into your sparring. So you might have people going through and doing their regular kumite or their regular randori, and you say, okay, now at any point, person B is going to throw a wild haymaker. And any time you see that haymaker, you do technique X. Uh, and this kind of thing helps students develop an awareness that they're not usually sort of developing. It's something that they may pick up on their own, and they may not. But when you incorporate these types of triggers, they're forced to look for them. They're forced to notice something happening, notice something changing from what they're used to, and reacting to it appropriately. And so, both approaches, the sport fighting and the scenario training, have some very good benefits to them. But we can also sort of blend them together and get the best of both worlds. So, when we think about pressure testing, we don't have to think of it just in terms of sparring. We have a wide variety of different ways to approach it. 